Hi, everyone. So yeah, I'm happy to be there. I was there last year. Uh, I was giving another talk. And in fact, this is what I wanted to do today uh, at the beginning. I wanted to update my talk from last year. Uh, I was talking about API as a project and how to deal, how you build an API and thinking about it as a project. But um, I got distracted. Uh, like everyone, it's, it's a bit stupid, but uh, yes, everyone has been talking about Bitcoin for like, not years, I would say, but month and month. And, at the same, and you put it on a to-do list and you say, oh, I need to check out what this is. And, and then the price surged so much that I really had to dive in it. And uh, so this is a bit what caused my distraction and uh, I switched uh, the topic to uh, Bitcoin. And you're gonna see that it's very logic. I'm starting with the conclusion so that you would understand why uh, we are talking about Bitcoin in an API conference. Uh, any competent programmer has an API to cash, payments, escrow, wills, notaries, lotteries, dividends, micropayments, subscriptions, crowdfunding, and more. This is a quote from uh, Naval, the founder of uh, AngelList. And he's talking about Bitcoin. So I'm going to try to explain why he is uh, saying such a thing. Might sound crazy at first. First, I always, I, I studied philosophy, so I always try to define things. And I think that uh, it avoids a lot of confusion. And there is a lot of confusion with Bitcoins. So first thing, Bitcoin has an excellent timing. And that's probably why it took off and why it was created. Uh, I mean, when you look at these questions, uh, why store my money with, str with strangers who make crazy bets on derivatives? Why keep my money in a bank that could threaten to seize it? Why keep my hard-earned savings in a currency that could get devalued because of an incompetent government? Uh, all, all these questions uh, lead to Bitcoin. At the same time, I mean, you've seen the, the, the price surge, it's like crazy, and you can compare it to different bubbles uh, in their history. Uh, the tulip bubble is a famous one. People were buying tulip bulbs in the 17th century and they went crazy over it. Another famous one is the South Sea bubble. So you have this, uh, this person made a, a, a parallel and um, compared the two graphs, the graph of the Bitcoin and the graph of the South Sea bubble. And you can see that uh, it matches and that Bitcoin really looks like it's a bubble. Uh, if you are interested in all this, I'll share my slides uh, afterwards. And uh, I recommend a nice book from uh, Galbraith called Money, whatever. Uh, and so, yeah, hence my question. Who knows Bitcoin? And who owns Bitcoins? <laughs> okay, so it's just for semantics. It's also for fun because it's cool to interact with uh, you know, the people, but, but it's also the semantics. <laughs> See the difference? Uh, Bitcoin is uh, capitalized, and who owns Bitcoins? Uh, it's uh, not capitalized, it's a small letter, and there is an S at the end. So uh, on one side, we are talking about a currency, and on the other side, we are talking about uh, Bitcoin as a network, as a protocol. And this is not understood by a lot of commentators. Um, I mean, a lot of journalists are just saying, oh, uh, this is a bubble, this is a bubble. And yeah, they are right, because they are talking about Bitcoins. But uh, a protocol or a network uh, cannot be a bubble from uh, my point of view. Uh, it's more, I mean, a protocol is just, is just a set of rules. Uh, just before, <coughs> it, was the <coughs> it was an image of a, of a network, but it's, 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 it's not even this. It's just a set of rules. So how can a set of rules can be a bubble? It doesn't make sense, you know. So once we made this distinction, we begin to see uh, that we beginning to see things more clearly. <coughs> I'm sorry. So another quote from a famous VC, Fred Wilson. Uh, Entrepreneurs and developers uh, are now building technology on top of Bitcoin to make it more useful, more accessible, and more secure. So that's also why probably when I asked, do you know Bitcoin, a lot of people raise their hands. And when you ask uh, who owns Bitcoins, uh, not many people, because it's still a geek thing and you have to dive into it and understand it a little bit. 
So basically, the, the company uh, in which Fred Wilson invested is Coinbase, and it allows people, like stupid people like me, to buy some Bitcoins, for example, uh, it's just a, a, a wallet. So you see where the protocol leads to a platform, and the platform leads to building. And when I say building, of course, you're thinking about developers, so we're getting closer to uh, the API topic of getting back. Just to summarize last time, uh, when you say Bitcoin, people think gold 2.0, currency, platform, protocol, and there's this distinction. And some, for the currency, you are buying, and for the platform, protocol, you are building. So it's completely a different thing. <clears throat> so let's keep on a bit with the semantics, but uh, it's going to get even more concrete. When... The definition of Bitcoin, if you go on Wikipedia, is uh, Bitcoin is an open source, peer-to-peer -peer electronic money and payment network. So the word that I like in this, phrase, in, this, in this sentence is, of course, money. And you want to ask, what is money? So money is any object or record that is generally accepted as payment. Again, the important word is payment here. So I want to know what is a payment. And a payment is a transaction. And I think that this is what we need to remember all the time, that when we are talking about Bitcoin as a protocol, it's a protocol to deal with transactions, to make transactions, okay? So the particular thing that Bitcoin offers, why it's so innovative and it changes a lot of things, it's that it removes the need for trust. We don't need, because in a transaction, if I'm doing an exchange with you, uh, I don't know what, uh, selling you something, or if I am buying something on eBay or whatever, and you, so you're making a transaction, you need to, to trust the other party. And Bitcoin removes this need. Yeah, I'm hot. <laughs> I'm warm, warm. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I'm hot, it doesn't sound it. So in French, it sounds okay, but in, in English, it's <laughs> not that good. That's true. <clears throat> Sorry. So yeah. So as I'm saying, Bitcoin is removing trust, the, the need for trust in the, in the system that deals with the transaction. There are four key concepts. I mean, I'm not going to go through Bitcoin and explain and explain because there are only 25 minutes. But I mean, if there were four things, four concepts that we need to know about to understand Bitcoin is the, the, the digital signatures, the P2P network, the distributed blockchain, and the proof of work system. So some of these elements, we're gonna get back to them afterwards. And the, if the, the, the one thing beyond these four uh, elements is that, again, no trust needed. And when you remove trust, the need for trust in a system, it means that you can automate. And when you can automate, and it means that you can program things. So we're getting closer to APIs, you see what I mean? is that developers can start working easily with money because uh, the system is reliable and there's no uh, room for uh, um, forgery and uh, security problems. So we get to this new section, building, where I'm gonna try to provide a few examples. First thing is that Bitcoin has an open API. Uh, and this is quite interesting because um, <clears throat> Last year, uh, Steve uh, Klamnik, I don't know if he's around. Yeah, hello. So that you understand now why I was asking you a question uh, yesterday. Steve was uh, giving a presentation about open APIs last year and um, how do you define an open API? And his point was that it is different from open source. When you say open API, you're not talking about an open source API. You're talking about an API that just uh, opens, that is accessible by anyone who wants to use it and who uh, is also reliable in time, who respects, uh, respects uh, the developer ecosystem, who respects the people that will build other projects on it. Uh, for example, when you think about Twitter, they changed several times the API and uh, killed a bit some part of the ecosystem. So the, the, the way Steve was defining an open API was just uh, an, an, an API that is accessible to anyone and uh, who has a certain um, ethic, I would say. But when, you talk, when, you're saying, when I'm saying that Bitcoin is an open API, it's uh, more than that, and it's more in the open source uh, sense of the term. Uh, so because first, Bitcoin is open source, so the API is open source, and uh, uh, second, it's uh, distributed uh, with this peer-to-peer -peer network that I mentioned. So 
it's a safe ecosystem if you want to build. Uh, we were saying it's a platform, it, it's, a, it's a protocol, and you see that you have some very sane uh, routes uh, for the developers if they want to build on it because they can see the code, they can access it, and they can do anything that they want, and they know that they, they won't get screwed up because there is not one person that is going to decide to change everything. Everything is distributed, everything is collaborative, is free by the people for the people. A bit uh, utopic, you might say, but that's the fact. So I'm gonna try to take an example. Um, is, is the time that I, I've been talking for 17 minutes? No. All right, whatever, sorry. I'm just trying to calculate the time, but I have no idea. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna try to give an example because you see I'm talking about yeah, how Bitcoin is a protocol, you can build things on it, so what can you build? Uh, I'll try to give an, a good example. There, there is a nice uh, blog post uh, called The Internet is for Snacking. The point of the guy is uh, that uh, Internet loves uh, simple, focused projects that capture anatomic behavior and become compound only by linking in and out to other services. Uh, this might sound very abstract, but uh, it's to say, for, to explain, for example, the success of Tumblr, the success of Twitter, uh, and when you think more recently, you, think, you can think about Snapchat, you can think about Tinder. All these are very, very, very simple, focused projects, and um, Internet loves this. And there, there is one thing missing, though. It's, it hasn't been brought to uh, payments. You cannot make micropayments. There are some micropayments solution. I'm not saying that uh, nothing exists, but it hasn't been democratized. Uh, we are not using micropayments every day, although we should because, for example, when you imagine um, the, the, the problem that the media have, uh, if we were able to pay two cents to access an article and it would be just a button, like you, you tweet something or you buffer, no, you have a button and you give two cents uh, to see the article and read it, uh, people would give more money to the media and it would be a good way to monetize. And when you look at the platforms uh, that uh, rely on micropayments, uh, such as Android or iOS uh, with the Apple Store, it, it's, it's a huge success, but still they have to take a big fee uh, to the developers and uh, the people who sell the apps because the micropayments cost a lot. When you make a micropayment, uh, a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the money just uh, goes to the intermediary, uh, the middleman, uh, which is removed in a Bitcoin context. You still following what I'm uh, saying? So, for example, to be concrete, Bitcoin can solve this micropayment problem and make it real. So um, I talked about the blockchain as one of the four uh, elements uh, important in, in Bitcoin, one of the four core concepts. It's like a distributed uh, maintenance, maintenance of a ledger. So all the transactions are recorded in uh, what we call the blockchain. So this with, comes with two constraints or problems. Uh, number one is uh, for scalability. Uh, when you look at the maximum capacity today of Bitcoin, uh, they are processing like one transaction per second, but they, they, their um, capacity is more around seven. So there is still some some uh, uh, capacity that they didn't use, but if everybody uh, tomorrow starts making micropayments, it, it won't work well. Uh, second uh, thing is that uh, when you make a micropayment uh, on Bitcoin, uh, a miner uh, needs to process it and uh, uh, says that, uh, say that it's okay to the rest of the network. So you are paying a very small fee, but a small fee to the rest of the network, uh, to, a, to a miner. And the thing is that the miners will not take, they will take one micropayment from you, two, but if you start like reading 10 articles on uh, a media and making uh, 10 micropayments one after the other, they will refuse your uh, payment because they don't make money on this. So the problem that we see with uh, today's banking still is still valid uh, with, the, with the Bitcoin, okay? So you have one solution uh, set up by uh, Coinbase, for example, the company I, I talked about. Um, they just have a, uh, they, they, they just take off, they, they just take away the transactions from the blockchain and they just, they, they have their users and their users can have free microtransactions one from, to the other. But, it, it, but it's limited to their users, but still it works. They just don't rely on the real Bitcoin network. It, but but uh, uh, it's a third party, they have an API and they can process micropayments for their users. But 
But, but if I was going on the media and I want to make my micropayment, I would need to be a Coinbase uh, client. So this is why they basically offer the service for free. It's because it, it's a good way to acquire some clients, just like uh, you know, uh, uh, phone companies were giving away uh, some uh, free cell phones. It's, it's to acquire some clients. So this is one solution, part of the ecosystem. They are building a, a very nice company based on this, but not only. But the nice thing about Bitcoin is that you would have a second solution, native. So you would not rely on a third party app uh, because Bitcoin has some kind of hidden features. Uh, here's a quote from uh, the mysterious uh, Satoshi, who is the founder of uh, Bitcoin, but nobody knows who he is, etc. So the Bitcoin uh, design supports a tremendous variety of possible transaction types that I designed years ago. Escrow transactions, bonded contracts, third party arbitration, multi-party signature, etc. So we, we're starting to see what the, the first quote that I, give, I gave uh, is about. Um, it, this means very concretely that uh, Bitcoin uses a scripting system for transactions and you can, and you can modify and you can do some scripting within the transactions. So a list of instructions recorded with each transaction that describe how the next person wanting to, wanting to spend the Bitcoins being transferred can gain access to them. So yeah, Coinbase was only within the users, but there are like these people, Bitcoin J, uh, that built a protocol using this uh, scripting uh, and that allows to manage micropayments, uh, but they just, re they, they just offer a protocol to do this. So if you are a developer and that you don't want to rely on a third party app uh, that is uh, somehow commercial or whatever, you can just uh, spend a bit of time, maybe more than with Coinbase and use this protocol uh, that uh, uses these kind of hidden features of Bitcoin. So my point is that the Bitcoin ecosystem uh, is made both by third parties and uh, nat native services. And it's going to be exciting to see what, it, what, it, what is going to happen because it's, it's, uh, there's really all the, the, the keys for a big uh, internet uh, re revolution, I would say. So what I, what I mentioned is that uh, I mentioned one type of contract, but other contracts uh, are, are possible. So uh, smart property, agents. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go uh, into the details uh, of, uh, of all this. But there are many uh, possibilities be beyond the fact of just transferring one Bitcoin to the other. You can attach some extra information and uh, build more complex systems on it. Um, so when you read again the opening quote uh, that, I, that I gave, uh, you understand much better what he was referring to, is that uh, Bitcoin is not only a, a way to process uh, digital payments or a new currency, uh, etc. It also has all these possibilities that just wait to be uh, harnessed uh, by the developers. That just is what I mean. So um, one interesting thing, um, is uh, the, the, the ecosystem is still uh, very, very young. And uh, today investors are um, putting money into Bitcoins more than into the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem, I would say. So they are not funding uh, that many uh, ventures uh, or startups. And this is because it's, uh, it makes more sense to put money into Bitcoins and uh, it, the, the, the market cap is not big enough uh, for, for, for the, for, um, to be interested, uh, interesting for the VCs. Because the, the VC, when you go to them, the, the, the question they love to ask is how do you make a billion dollar business? So when the market cap of Bitcoin uh, three weeks ago was like uh, two billion, uh, okay, how am I going to make a billion business? It means that, oh, I'm gonna get 50% of the value of it. So it, it doesn't make sense. But once, the, if, if the Bitcoins keeps on surging like this, uh, VCs will join the party, not just to buy the currency, but also to buy, uh, to fund some uh, ventures. And just to get back on the, the bubble uh, aspect, um, this is the number of unique Bitcoins uh, address. So if, 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 you, if you think about, uh, if you're looking at the value of Bitcoin, etc., of course it's a bubble, but if you're thinking about the protocol and this, uh, this is the like the user base and this is just user growth and then people adopting the protocol and 
would you think it's a bubble when people uh, start uh, using television or telephone? And uh, it's not a bubble, it's just people going to this, uh, this tool. So it's going to be very interesting to see uh, what is going to happen. I don't know how much time I, I still have because I, I, didn't, I didn't check. So I can, uh, I can keep on talking. <laughs> I don't know if you have questions or if you see where I'm trying to go. You understand? You're following? So there is a lot, a lot of people like to compare um, Bitcoin with uh, protocols. Uh, and for example, uh, the big question is like, uh, is Bitcoin like, uh, it, it, some people say Bitcoin is like SMTP, HTTP, uh, and some others say it, it, it's like TCP IP. And uh, the thing with uh, TCP IP, if you make a comparison, is that uh, it's, not, it, it's not just uh, the internet protocol, but it's the whole suit of the, of the different layers uh, of networking, TCP IP. And at the, at what I'm thinking, at, at first I wanted to, because I deal with email at Mailjet, so I wanted to make a parallel with SMTP and it works quite well to some extent. But at the same time, um, so the, the, the thing is that if you make the comparison with HTTP, so it's on top, sorry, I should have a, it's, it's on top of the, uh, ah, yes, thank you. So you see, if, if, if I want to make a comparison with HTTP or SMTP, it's, it's really the application layer of uh, TCP IP. And uh, when you look at, at the transport layer, nothing is happening. Bitcoin is not there yet. But at the same time, I stumbled on a project of people from the Freenet uh, community. And they are working on a Bitcoin transport layer API. So basically, a radio station could transmit the blockchain over shortwave radio so that everyone in the world has access to it. So it, it, it's more like TCP IP, and if so, you can, I mean, TCP IP is the reason uh, why we have uh, internet and the web. So you can imagine uh, if these kinds of projects become uh, real, uh, it can be really the, the, the source of a, a big revolution. Maybe not in the sense that we imagine uh, some, I mean, you can imagine that banks are gonna disappear, etc. As we've seen, you're going to need some uh, third parties, but there will always be the possibility, if you are, are a developer, etc., to develop your own tool, native tools. I think, I mean, if you have questions, I'm ready, but uh, I can keep on talking if you want as well. <laughs> because, because the speaker after uh, you I ca cannot come for a personal reason, <laughs> so you can continue to talk, or there is another talk about philosophy and APIs upstairs where we can be in the great room. So, so you can continue the discussion. Uh, I studied philosophy, so I can uh, talk about philosophy and APIs, like make a <laughs> another party. I mean, I don't know if you have questions or... Thanks, great talk. Uh, what do you think about banks? Should they involve, be involved in Bitcoins or stay out of it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, like personally or uh, what would be good for them? <laughs> I, I don't have a huge passion for banks. I, I think that they will go into it, but it's very difficult to understand their position. Um, and, and it's even before talking about the banks and the ecosystem, uh, how they might evolve with this, uh, just on the, you can also look on the, on the geopolitics uh, side. And uh, because today, uh, the, the, the biggest, the bigger, uh, the biggest uh, stock exchange, I mean, not stock exchange, but Bitcoin exchange uh, marketplaces, uh, are, one is in Japan uh, and uh, the other ones are in China. And a lot of people in China are using Bitcoin to uh, transfer some yen out of the country. Uh, and so there are all these reasons uh, to think that it's... Uh, some people say that China got Bitcoin and, and they know what it's going to change. And like, uh, you know, uh, the 19th century was uh, the UK pound. Uh, the 20th century was the US dollar. And uh, Bitcoin is going to be the 21st century and it's going to be in Asia. And so if you start thinking about this, then uh, how the, uh, are they going to deal with their, um, to integrate it to their financial system, etc. Uh, I, I don't know. And I think that the decisions will, n will start to be taken on the, on the, on the, um, on the geopolitics uh, side and not that much into uh, the, the businesses. But 
the, the utopia, I think, would be to think uh, that uh, banks are going to disappear. Uh, the truth is, it's, it's a protocol. But again, when I asked, uh, okay, who uh, owns bitcoins? Nobody. So we, we need easy services to deal uh, with our bitcoins. We don't want to have uh, to, to make, uh, you know, uh, uh, today, if you own bitcoins and uh, you, there's no intermediary, you, you have a USB key and you save it and you uh, dig a hole in your garden and you hide one and you write something else on the paper and you learn whatever. But it, it, it's difficult. So you might want to rely on a, on a highly secure uh, infrastructure and be willing to pay them a little, but you would probably be willing to pay them uh, much more, much less than what we pay banks today. Uh, that, uh, so they, they should definitely uh, adapt, and I think that they are studying. Uh, I mean, a lot. Some some of the um, best Bitcoin experts uh, are either close to Google or uh, working for uh, IBM and consulting with big banks. So they are thinking about it. But the the the, the whole thing is what. What, what the regulations are going to be, and uh, that's it, where, where the momentum is going to take. And right now, it, mean, it seems like it's in Asia. And that might explain, because one of the reasons why uh, Bitcoin surged a lot in the last few weeks is that there were some uh, hearings in the Senate in the US, and uh, everybody was expecting uh, that the, the, the government was going to make a declaration like, uh, oh, uh, Bitcoin, we're going to regulate, et cetera. But they were more like, oh, interesting. <laughs> so they, they, they don't know. And I think that they will uh, be the ones who give the real direction. That's it. Um, internet disrupts a lot of things about money and uh, currency. For example, Mayjet uh, gives credits to customers. A lot of Facebook games have internal currency and money, and uh, you can convert real money to digital currency, but uh, you can also convert uh, digital currency to money, for example, with uh, World of Warcraft uh, gold yeah. uh, farm in Asia and things like that. So do you think uh, Bitcoin can become uh, a kind of digital standard currency for this kind of services? This is uh, already what is happening because when when I, I didn't talk about the other cryptocurrencies, but there are a lot of other cryptocurrencies, uh, like Litecoin is a, is a famous one. But the other day, I stumbled upon uh, one that was called Alacoin. And when you buy an Alacoin, 10% goes to the um, Muslim Brotherhood. So uh, everybody is using the, the, the protocol to build uh, variations uh, of it. And uh, for people who already have digital currencies, it's just a way to manage it more safely and more conveniently. Uh, I don't know if it answers your question. <laughs> Who's this? Um, hi, I heard something about 51% uh, majority, which is needed if the protocol. Uh, Sorry? Um, I heard something about the 51% um, majority if the protocol gets changed um, to, uh, to allow changes to the protocol. Is this, um, what, what is about it? 51% uh, of the network who, who is calculating these, these, these hashes? Uh, I mean, you mean the idea that, uh, I mean, maybe, I don't know if this is what you're referring uh, to, but uh, it might be the idea that, uh, for example, um, uh, if, if the if you wanted to... Um, Sometimes we have updates. If you want to... Uh, 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 the, the, I mean, I don't, sorry, I, different ideas are popping uh, in my mind, but uh, maybe it's, I don't know if I understood well, but maybe there is the idea that uh, if more than half of the network uh, starts to act uh, in a bad way, then uh, they could compromise uh, the security of Bitcoin. Is this uh, your question? Or? Yes, but uh, the thing is that uh, the, the bigger it gets, uh, the harder it is uh, to coordinate 51% uh, and it's almost impossible. Uh, when, when you look at this, it's, uh, right now it's uh, 180,000 uh, Bitcoin addresses. So you need to get in touch with uh, 90 people. You don't know who they are because it's pseudonymous. You, can, you know I mean, the entity, but you don't know the actual identity. So it's, I mean, it's impossible. I mean, on the, the security side, people have, uh, they hear like, uh, oh, uh, uh, a Bitcoin exchange got mugged, a uh, Bitcoin wallet got mugged, uh, blah, blah, blah. But it, it's not relative to the protocol itself. It's uh, just the people uh, keeping the secret keys that were not uh, uh, protecting uh, their data enough.
Hello, my name is Christian. Thanks for a great talk Hi. about the protocol itself. Thanks. But I'm wondering about the Bitcoins themselves. Like, there is this protocol at this moment, but the Bitcoin value is fluctuating so much. So, for example, me as a developer implementing this, it's a bit of a uncertainty about where the market is going to stop and so on and so forth. That, that, that's the bet that uh, people have to take. I mean, there, there are several, but of course, volatility is a problem. And uh, if uh, your Bitcoin uh, is valued uh, 1,000 uh, one day and 100 uh, the day after, it's a problem for adoption. But, uh, but at the same time, it, it, it doesn't, it's, it's certainly going to get more and more stable as uh, the number of users grow. Uh, today, uh, it's influenced like by, uh, yeah, all the, in China, we don't really understand what is happening. There's an oh, empty Gox with the, the first uh, marketplace. They, they, they get like 90% of all the transaction. And, and there are some problems uh, of transparency, of uh, influence. But the thing is that as it grows, it's going to get more and more distributed because it's designed like this. So I, I think that it, it can get more and more stable. But by the design of the system, do you think it can ever stop at a certain level? Because there are so many factors playing in that no currency It, it will always used. move, but when you look at, at gold, uh, gold is always uh, moving as well. Uh, it's, it's not really, I mean, uh, any currency is, uh, it has a lot of volatility, uh, except if you are uh, printing dollars uh, to uh, whatever, but if you are tricking uh, something. So it's not necessarily as bad if, if once it will be accepted by, uh, by, 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 um, by default, it, it, it won't be a problem. But the thing is that what you have to imagine as well is that maybe uh, the Bitcoin, as we are talking now, is going to disappear. And so it's secondary and we don't care. Maybe it's going to fail, but the protocol will still be there and uh, will allow uh, some uh, companies, some people uh, to design other system and launch other uh, currencies uh, and try to correct uh, these potential flaws or whatever. But the, the paradigm, uh, uh, the protocol is here and this is not going to... Uh, not, not gonna die, and it's really a revolution. So, just two small question because it yeah. inspires me a lot. So, <laughs> really fast answer. But first, you know, the tulip crisis, tulip crisis in 1638, yeah. it was the biggest finance crisis of all the world because it has been speculation and then goes down really yeah. fast. Yeah. And it really looks like the Bitcoin curve, but the gold curve, value curve, really looks like the Bitcoin curve. So if you were looking for an internet, you th just type gold versus Bitcoin and tulip versus Bitcoin. Yeah. It seems that they are completely the same, but we don't know the end of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for you, to your mind, the, what we have now is more tulip or gold. And second question, when Mailjet will accept Bitcoins? <laughs> That's something that uh, I, I, I know there are some discussions. Then, uh, I mean, for the second part of the question, um, but you always need to sell the thing and explain it well because uh, any anybody who hears bitcoin st st first thinks about uh, you know uh, crime etc so because, it, because if i take for example a one year plan on mailjet which is one bitcoin and i i prefer maybe to pay it at the end than now so it may be really <laughs> risky for a SaaS company. Yeah, and, and for us, what do, what, get, what do we do after with the Bitcoin? Uh, if, if we can pay Clever Cloud with uh, Bitcoin, I don't know if he's still around, yeah. uh, then we maybe don't care, but uh, no, it's, it's, it's uh, complicated. Uh, to go back to your first uh, question, uh, you don't know, you don't know, but uh, it's not reasonable. Uh, you, you see some students saying, oh, I've put my loan into Bitcoins and, uh, and this is good. This is not reasonable at all, but putting a fraction of uh, your money into Bitcoins uh, makes a lot of sense. But like a bet, a small bet, like one to 5% of your money. All my friends which are in the financial world say two things. So trees doesn't go to the sky. So one time it will start to grow, but you know, they, all, they are often wrong. So they predicted nine of the last five crises. So, so they are often wrong. Uh, and the second one is uh, when your taxi driver tells you you should make an investment and you are on this investment, sell, sell really, really fast. So it's the two, it's the two thing that the financial world told me about Bitcoin. Yeah. So, but yeah. So to, we'll to, see. To, I, I think there's a question over there. Uh, I, I, oh, I can yeah, uh, sure. take it. Just, just a, a last thing, like we're talking more about the financial aspects, but if you are a developer, the two things you need to look uh, at uh, are the scripts and the contracts. And you look, look at the Bitcoin documentation, and this is what is really interesting and often overlooked.
Yeah, uh, so we were talking about uh, maybe Bitcoin can be uh, the future of uh, microtransaction transaction on the web. And I believe that uh, there is a fixed amount of uh, Bitcoin that can be mined uh, ever. Yeah. Like something like... 21 million? Few, yeah. Right. Uh, in a few years, it'd be uh, a maximum uh, Bitcoin mined. And how can Bitcoin uh, become the standard for microtransaction is if there is a fixed amount of Bitcoin who will, uh, which will be ever produced. Uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can just... Uh, Sorry, you can just exchange fractions of bitcoins and it goes to like one millionth. One millionth is called a Satoshi. And uh, because today it's uh, one bitcoin is $1,000. But uh, if I buy uh, some candy to a guy, uh, I don't know, we exchange bitcoins like this with our cell phones, I would just give like 0 0.00000. And, and this is the unity. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't hurt the, the system. One of the critics is that because there is a fixed amount uh, of, uh, of, of money in the, in the system. It is deflationary uh, by, uh, by, by design. And uh, some people say it's a problem. I don't believe it's that much of a problem, but um, yeah, that could also be an argument. I mean, but just the deflationary aspect. Hello. Uh, I would like to, to know if, according to you, it will, it will be a, a trouble about you know the, the the atomicity of transaction because it, it can take five minutes uh, to confirm a transaction I, is it uh, good according to you this uh, it takes yeah f five to ten minutes uh, I, I I I don't think it's it's a big uh, issue and uh, because on the other side it solves uh, so many problems I mean for the merchant you could think okay if I need to wait uh, for five to ten minutes uh, for the money to get there etc but the thing is that after five or ten minutes if the money is there it's there and it cannot be cancelled with a credit card and so you don't have to deal with all the frauds and uh, there there is uh, so much added value here that I don't think it's uh, that much of a bad thing. And then, I mean, if, I mean, if Amazon starts to take bitcoins, uh, at one point they start to know their customer so they can just, you know, maybe increase the trust and, and assume that the thing is okay, uh, say okay, transaction okay, and just uh, don't send the message to their uh, warehouse uh, to make the package until the thing is cached. So it's not a problem from this point of view. Wow, you had 15 minutes speak. So yeah. right. okay, thank Thanks you very much. Uh, so thank you, thank you. Ali. Thanks.